Hello! Uh, without any formal introduction, uh, this is a buckle that I have just modeled that I'm going to try to do again and faster and so that I can remember how I did it. So I already have set up my images. I'm going to add a Bezier curve. Can't see it right now because it's on the wrong axis for what I'm doing, so let's rotate Z 90 and rotate Y 90 and there it is where I can take a look at it. And let's turn on my keystrokes so that we can see what I'm doing here. So selecting the curve, tab into edit mode, grab, grab just along the Y axis, grab the handle, I want these handles to be scaled along the Y to zero so that they're directly on top of each other. And this can be somewhere around there. Grab Y, uh, no, grab Z. So somewhere around like that. I'm not going to try to make it too ridiculously accurate for this iteration. Uh, let's take a look at it from the other angle. Pull that up to there. Pull that to there-ish. All right, that looks good. Uh, now I want to make the profile yeah, let's bring that back again. The profile that this is going to follow uh, separately, get out of edit mode, um, add another curve, uh, rotate Z 90, rotate Y 90, grab it out of the way. Tab into edit mode. Uh, I'm going to delete this one. So I just have this one vertex. Um, let's change that into handle type vector. Scale along y0. Now let's extrude this in the z direction 0.5. Then extrude in the y direction 0.5. No, something's wrong there. That's not the kind of handle I wanted. Let's see. Scale y0. And right click. Yeah, handle type should be vector. Let's see if that works for us. Extrude z 0.5. Extrude y 0.5. There we go. Extrude y negative 0.5. Extrude z negative 0.5. We're missing one again. Extrude y negative 0.5. There we go. Now join those two. Select the overlapping ones, press F, press F, there we go, and now there's still two of them there, so let's see, delete one, now I've just got one there, there we go, that's what we wanted. Let's name these things. This is our profile, and this one that's a curve right now is going to be our buckle. All right. 
right now I'm going to take my buckle and in my curve settings I want to apply a bevel which is how you give it thickness but I want to use an object and it's that uh, profile curve. What's going on here? Let's get out of edit. There we go. Here we are. And I don't want this to be shaded smooth right now, shaded flat, so we can see what we're working with. There we go. If I scale this bigger or smaller, that gets bigger or smaller with me. And it's doing it a little bit off center, and that's because my um, origin isn't where I want it to be. So let's set our origin to our geometry. That's better. And I want it to be right about the size of that buckle at its thickest part, because we're going to make it thinner towards the edges later on. All right. Uh, now if I look at it from the side view, I want that to curve, and I want to do that while I still have my Bezier curve available. So I'm grabbing one of these handles. It's about like that. And that is right where I want that to start. Okay. Now, so that I can work with tools like extrude, I need to turn this into a mesh. And that's what my mesh looks like now. I'm going to add my first modifier, which is a mirror wrong axis. There we go. So if we look at this by itself now without the reference images, that lets me get a good idea of the like transition is smooth here and everything is working the way I want it to, which it is. So that's starting to look like that belt buckle. It just needs all its like slimming and beveling and all of that. Coming back into my side view. I want to add some new segments here, but I want them to be in the same plane as what I'm working with, because this is kind of curved in here. So to hit three to go to surface selection, select that surface, and then what was it? Shift seven plus? No, I don't remember my shortcut. Let me look it up. All right, there we go. The shortcut is Shift and Number Pad 7. So with that face selected, like if I'm kind of down here, wrong angle, Shift, Number Pad 7. So now I should be aligned with that guy. Um, oh, first I need to select these edges that I need. Uh, so. I'm not a YouTuber by trade, so there's going to be a little bit of sloppiness here. Alright, those are my four edges that I want to extrude. Um, oh, I know how I did this before. Uh, back to face selection, change our view to that, then turn on x-ray view so that I can select all the things. Turn it back into edge view. Select just these edges. There we go. Now I can extrude a new piece. So I'm going to follow the top edge to start. And last time I followed the, the top edge perfectly, so I would go back and change all of these. But I'm not going to do that this time because I'm just I'm trying to get through this a little faster. Maybe I should change the bottom ones though. Okay, let's let's do that. Uh, take the whole thing, scale it in the Z direction. No, in the X direction. There we go. That's better. 
Okay, I think that's more like where we want to be. Now we're going to extrude this. Extrude. So I'm just eyeballing this as a nice smooth shape. I didn't expect it to be coming out perfect last time, but it actually was really nice. in a direction here. Okay, well, that's not doing what I wanted to, so let's just... That looks pretty chill to me. Get out of that view. We'll see, we've got this hole we need to fill here. So edge selection mode and fill it. If I grab this, uh oh, I did have an extra one there. Okay, let's dissolve those edges. These are edges? No. We still have extra edges there. Okay, I don't know what was going on there, but it seems to be fixed now. Let's get back into vertex selection mode. Extrude one last one. Put it where I want. And that should be it. Get in our edge selection mode. You can see that this is just one set of edges now. And let's fill it. Okay. Now. We want to start adding some of our modifiers. Actually, let's fix that shape first. Okay, get rid of some of this extra stuff so, so that we can do selections more easily. I'm gonna make some vertex groups. 
hide this briefly. We want an inner and outer vertex group. again. There. Yeah. All right, so I want to make it a little skinnier on this end than this end. Um, I'm going to use proportional editing to move these after hiding those. So turn on proportional editing mess with points and let's grab oh I wanted all of those to move also hold on let's see uh, alt H should bring those back yep so select the outer ones and hide there we go that's what we wanted now of the ones that are left And kind of grab, rotate, grab. Let's see how that's looking compared to my image. Okay. Grab. Again, I'm not trying to get this one entirely perfect this time, just a representation of what's the steps. All right, that's pretty good. That gets skinnier. It's not exactly the angle I want, but we're gonna, well, let's fix it a little bit. Let's select the inner ones now and hide those. And then I can move this a little more. Okay. Yeah, that's better. And select the outer again. I want this to be straight here instead of at an angle. Hide. Move that to there, I guess. Let's see. Maybe move less of it there. There we go. And bring that back. Ah, that's way nicer. Okay, so this is a shape we can work with. We are ready to add the rest of our modifiers. We're set to shade flat so that I can see a little bit better the surfaces that I'm working with. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our matte cap view again so that that shows even a little better. I can turn off my reference images. And now the first thing I want to add is my 
uh, subdivision. I can do subdivision first or bevel first. Let's do the subdivision because I want to show a problem that it gets. So I want to keep that top and side edge flat. So if I come here into my edit view, select the edges on both these sides here and edge crease turn that to one and then similarly on the other side So now you can see from the little marks in between these that we are subdivided and we're keeping the flat top and bottom instead of having a peak there. All right, now let's add our bevel. And I'm going to bring this up to the top. There we go. So that looks okay. I want the bevel to be a little bigger, especially in some places. And you'll see that when I raise this amount, it doesn't do anything. And that's because we have clamp overlap going on. Uh, that's necessary to keep it from exploding there. So you see we add more bevel, it's starting to fall apart here. And that just gets worse. So instead of doing it that way, change this from offset to percent. And now it's a lot better. We still have a little issue down here where this particular face isn't beveling enough. I can't remember if I found a solution to that or not. So I don't know why that's jumping in right here now. That wasn't doing that before. But let's add our bevel weights and see if that solves our problem. So I want there to be a lot bigger bevel here than over here. Like on the part, I don't know if we can quite see. It's not super obvious here. Maybe it's on the side view. Yeah, not really. Um, on the actual buckle, these edges and the outside edge are rather sharp. There's just a little bit of a bevel. And the inner one right in this area gets very rounded. It's very soft. So the way we're going to do that is by assigning bevel weights. So let's make most of this a bevel weight of point three. Make the entire outside a bevel weight of 0.3. And this isn't making a difference yet because our limit method is still angle, so it's just doing it to the sharp angles. We want it to be by weight. There we go. And then let's do like this whole section. I want to be a weight of one. And then let's do point nine. 
can be 0.7. this you can see how much larger it is here than here and I want more segments ideally like that all right let's take a look at this in our shaded view again that's very nice what we wanted. I might want these main edges, the outside one and this one, to have a little bit bigger bevel all over than 0.3, but I can change that another time. This gives you the idea. This is basically the part that we're looking for. Um, when I look at its proportions now, I feel like it's a little bit too thick in this direction compared to everything else. So I'm just going to scale that part in the X direction and flatten it out a little bit. And then I'd probably want to apply that transformation before I did much more to it. But that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's pretty much done. Uh, I might make another video going forward showing how I put in the bar and the pin and the little hole that the pin is laying over. I can do that another time. Bye!